Hey everyone, it's Cameron again with Car Audio Now. Today I have another marine grade head unit for you. JBL's R4500 Wake Series. Uh, it's brand new in the box. And in today's video, I'm gonna unbox it, give you a close up of the unit, walk you through some of its key features and specs, and then I'll hook it up to my test bench and demo its user interface and its features to give you a walkthrough of what it looks like and how to use it. Let's dive on in. All right, thanks for tuning in you guys. Let's start by talking about the head unit a little bit, the R4500. To start, this is a marine grade head unit. Obviously, it's IPX7 rated uh, from the front, which means that it's independently tested and meets the standards to be immersed in the water up to three feet for 30 minutes. Uh, not that you necessarily would ever do that or need that. Uh, you'd probably have bigger problems if you did that on a boat, but IPX7, that rating is a pretty solid rating for a head unit. The higher the number seven, um, the, the better uh, the rating is. It's a digital media receiver, which means it's, it doesn't play CDs. It relies on uh, things like Bluetooth, USB, along with your smartphone or your music device for uh, the sources of its music. So what I'm going to do to start here, I'm going to unbox this thing, get all the components out on my bench here and start to walk you through everything that it comes with. Let's open this thing up. All right, here's everything in the box. Starting from left to right, uh, on the far left, you've got a, a seal, it's an included foam seal, and what you do, this goes in between the backside of the head unit and the mounting surface. It basically gives it a watertight seal on the surface. That's what helps give this its IPX7 rating, at least from the front here. Um, Next you've got a, and, and right out of the gate, this is the, some of the things that I like to look for. Uh, this is the uh, wire harness that it comes with. This plugs into the back of the unit. On this side, these will go to things like ground. This is your accessory, right? And this is uh, a couple of the other, the wires, for example, some of the, the speaker signal wires, right? This harness, it's uh, a, a water sealed harness. You can see this isn't like a traditional one that comes with like a, a normal head unit for your car. Uh, it's what I like to see when you plug this in. This thing is pretty well sealed and it will help prevent corrosion and just water and short, you know, short circuit, circuiting your, uh, your wires in here. And you can see on the other side, uh, I'll give you a close up, but there's a seal right here. So when you plug it in, it's water tight. Obviously you have the head unit. I'm gonna clear off my table in a moment and give you a close up of this. Uh, they also gave you stainless steel hardware. When I say hardware, it's basically four screws. I'll show you this in a moment, but two on each side, screws to the surface of your uh, of your boat, wherever you're mounting it to. And then they give you some paperwork. All right, you have your uh, warranty card, a uh, little setup sticker behind that, and then their manual. And in their manual, they give you a, a good overview of setup. And, and what I liked about this um, is just the general uh, overview and the way that they lay this out they give you clear pictures and they show you all of the operations and the user interface uh, of the the head unit and all the the settings and the features directly in here they give you setup advice right they um, they really walk you through uh, the Spanish and English uh, they walk you through everything all the key things about the head unit that you probably want to know up front before you install it and it's very well written so what I'm going to do here next, I'm going to clear off the table and then I'm going to give you, start walking in uh, into more detail about the features of the head unit, uh, give you some close-ups and uh, start to walk you through the features. Let me do that. Okay, let's get a good look at this thing. First off, on the front here, give you a close-up, you have a four inch color LCD screen. It's sealed behind this thin pane of glass. This is not a touch screen though. Uh, I'll repeat that. This is not a touch screen. Uh, it uses a rotary knob here to uh, on the left to, to navigate through the menus. Uh, you can see it clicks, right, enter. Uh, navigate through the menus, the settings, songs, etc., as well as control your volume across the, the, the various zones. You can see the entire face of this thing just looks very well sealed. 
the screen, you know, the buttons on the left. Uh, you look slightly behind the screen here where it connects to the chassis too. Uh, everything just looks very well sealed and fit for the marine environment. The chassis here too is pretty compact. It's about five inches wide here. And you can see just my hands, based on my hands, it's pretty compact. It's five inches wide, five inches and a quarter deep, and then a little under two inches uh, tall here. So good for relatively tight quarters. Um, you turn it around on the back here and you can see uh, First off, a couple of heat sinks here to uh, to keep this thing cool, but more uh, noticeably, you can see a slew of outputs and inputs, mainly outputs. Let me set this thing down and give you a close up and, and start to walk through a couple of, well, all of them. So first off, what I really like about this head unit is the multi-zone uh, functionality. It has three independent zones right here. You can see uh, one, two, and three, each with its uh, uh, each with a left, a right, and a subwoofer uh, signal output for each zone. You can see each of these have three different outputs, right? The black being uh, the subwoofer output, white and red being uh, the left and the right. So yes, each zone has its own dedicated subwoofer output, which is great. You can set up each of the zones independently in the interface on the head unit. I'll show this to you in a little bit and really customize your boat based on the zone you configure. This is great for uh, both larger boats and yachts that might have different staterooms or zones on the boat uh, that you'd like to control volume independently uh, on. Or also thinking about your wakeboard boat or river boat owners, this can be used to set up different zones too on your boat like cabins versus the tower speakers on your wakeboard boat or uh, the bow versus the cabin and so on. Very useful feature. I always love the idea of having zone control. It makes it a, a much more universal unit for uh, much a much broader variety of boats. JBL also uses a four volt output for all of these outputs. So these preamp outputs and RCAs are rated for four volts which makes them a great source for signal for all of you who plan to use an aftermarket amplifier to amplify your system in your boat. I typically look for at least four volts uh, output signal for anyone who plans to install a high performance amplifier or stereo. So this was also great to see. Now the 4500, the R4500 does also have a built-in amplifier directly in the unit here. It has uh, a 200 watt RMS rating times four channels. Uh, the built-in amp appears on the unit as zone one. So if you recall, there's three zones. Zone one, uh, if you're not using zone one in the preamp uh, outputs, zone one will be uh, powering your built-in amplifier. So if you don't have any af aftermarket amplifiers, you could also use the built-in amp on this unit. Another cool feature while we're talking about the built-in amp though is uh, what's called a two ohm stable output. It's kind of unique for the JBL and Infinity lineup. Uh, but for, for those of you who are looking to hook up more than four speakers to the built-in amplifier of this unit, the two, sta two ohm stable feature allows you to hook up up to two four ohm speakers per channel uh, while maintaining a two ohm output. That means you could in theory hook up eight four ohm speakers to the built-in amp while maintaining a two ohm output, pretty neat. You know, you might want to make sure that your speakers are uh, are kind of rated for that that type of uh, output, but pretty neat feature nonetheless. Moving on here, you have an antenna output, or excuse me, input, uh, pretty standard, along with an auxiliary input if you wanted to hook up an RCA auxiliary in, make it much more universal. You know, you can really connect anything to this with the right adapters. It also has a type A USB. They haven't switched over to USB-C yet, but this will charge and connect your phone or hook up a thumb drive and control and play music from that. The interface will allow you to go through your uh, directories and play, play the music. I'll show you how to do that when I demo this on my test bench. There's also an NM NMEA 2000 hookup. So you can hook up uh, this unit into your larger network of electronics on your boat. Uh, if you have a lo larger boat, like a yacht, M most of the times these are for, for much larger boats that have, um, you know, different electronics across or throughout the boat. Uh, it'll allow 
you uh, to leverage two-way communication between your boat's MFD and the unit so that you can control many of the features of this R4500 directly from your MFD um, at the helm or wherever else in, in, in your boat your MFD is. Then there's this remote output. Uh, you can see it says remote. This allows you to hook up a wired remote, certain compatible remote, wired remotes, so that you can control the head unit from different places across the boat as well. Uh, these are sold separately, but nice. You can basically put, you know, I'm thinking of use cases for river boats or wakeboard boats. If you had this, you know, towards uh, the front of the boat, the head unit, and then you wanted to hook up a uh, wired remote on the bow of the boat where you're kind of hanging out in the back, right? So you can place the those separate wired remotes throughout your boat and hook them into this remote output. And then last but not least, uh, I mentioned, and, and I mentioned this before, but I like the fact that these harnesses are sealed. You can see here, this is like a rubber seal. This harness here is responsible for ground. It's responsible for power accessory. It tells it when, to, when the unit to turn on and off. But you also find your internal uh, amplifier outputs for powering your speakers on this harness. And you can see this is the other main harness that I walked, that I showed you a close up uh, earlier. All you're gonna do here, you're gonna essentially plug this in. This the this part of the harness is gonna be hooked into the um, the wire harness of your boat. You know, power and, and ground and so on. And then you're just gonna plug it in, right? And you can see that this is uh, a sealed plug and it, it'll uh, prevent corrosion and, and uh, you know, just in, in terms of longevity, it's gonna help uh, prevent water uh, from getting in here and corroding the wires and creating uh, shortages. So the next thing I wanna do is get this thing installed on my test bench, demo some of the, the features and the, the user interface, show you what it looks like uh, when it's turned on and, and some of the core features like music, uh, zone control and so on. So let me get this thing on my test bench and start showing you what it looks like uh, with the power on. All right, so I've got the R4500 hooked up to my test bench. You can see it's got power. I turned it on. So let's just start walking through some of the, the high level features. Um, one of the things that I, like right out of the gate that I noticed from this head unit uh, when I was navigating through the menu and just in general, like the layout, the features and the buttons is this is a very simplistic, easy to use, easy to navigate unit. It's got um, you know, all the core features that, you, that you'd need, but, it, but it's very uh, simplistic. So let me just start walking you through, let's start out with, with some of the sources. So we kind of talked about the sources when uh, we when I was walking through the, the harness, right? All the outputs, the inputs, etc. So to access the list of sources on this unit, you're gonna use the back button here. And then once that, uh, what this does is really trigger like the menu, uh, all of the sources as, long, uh, uh, as well as the, the setup, right? So you can see you have your setup, you have FM. FM is what I had it defaulted to. It'll default back to whatever you last left the unit on. Uh, AM, you've got the weather band, you've got Bluetooth, USB, auxiliary, and then it's back to setup, right? It's a loop. So those are the, all the options and inputs that we walked through when I, was, when I was talking about the harness. Now, when you select one, oops, when you select one, you're gonna use the uh, the control knob here to select the option uh, and input that you'd like and it's going to display it. So this is FM. FM, uh, I'll point out, it's very simplistic. It's a, your standard FM radio, right? You have presets that you can set. It's got 18 presets that you can go ahead and set through uh, the, the user interface. And then to recall those presets, uh, click the, the control knob here again, and then you see preset recall, and you can pre-select or you can select any of the presets that, that you set. Now the AM is very similar. You have presets and preset recall, right? Same number of presets that you can set with AM. It's the same as, as the FM settings. Weather band, similar. You can go and navigate through the, the various uh, bands based on your local weather stations here. You can set presets as well and recall those presets depending on maybe where you're at, whatever lake or body of water you're on, up to 18, uh, the same as what it is for the FM and AM radios. Now let's talk a little bit about, a bit about Bluetooth. 
I've already got my phone connected here. To connect your device, you're gonna to navigate to the Bluetooth option um, or source, and then you're gonna click on the select button here, and then connect. And what that's gonna do is make it uh, visible when, when you uh, go into your, your phone settings, navigate to your Bluetooth and, and into the discovery area where you're gonna select R4500 and you can see this will display, via Bluetooth it displays the album, the, the artist, the, the, the title of the song, the, the album that it's, that it's in under, underneath that and then obviously you have all of your, your high level controls in terms of the song itself you have your play, uh, your next and previous, play pause, next and previous, pretty standard. Now, the one thing that I did notice on Bluetooth and when I was comparing Bluetooth versus USB is that the, the USB sound quality was, was just a little bit better than, than the Bluetooth. So what I would recommend is, is leveraging, if you're, if you're wanting the best quality of music, leveraging your USB connection versus the Bluetooth connection and that was that was using my iPhone 14 Pro Max uh, it might be different on on other devices but I did notice a slight difference in in the quality of, of the music and sound uh, between Bluetooth and USB next thing I'm gonna do is switch over to USB here click on select now it's gonna load for a couple seconds here and then it's gonna display various very similar information uh, to what I had on the Bluetooth uh, when I'm connected with my iPhone to the device via via blue or excuse me via USB. So um, same things album uh, the name of the artist the title of the song the album uh, name and then all of your your standard controls as well. Now where it's going to differ and I'm going to I'm going to pause for a moment here uh, to hook up my. Uh, USB thumb drive is you know how, how much can control obviously Bluetooth you can't you can't hook your your uh, your thumb drive up via Bluetooth so what I'm going to demonstrate here for you is what this interface looks like when you hook up your thumb drive and you have your music nested within a file structure within your thumb drive so I'm gonna go ahead and connect that right here in a moment so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my thumb drive you see it load on the screen Boom, pretty quick. It's gonna it's gonna default to whatever the first song is on your thumb drive the first time or whatever you were playing last uh, time you plugged it in. But let's go through some of the key features here. I'm gonna start out with just some of the, the, the generic features, repeat, random, right? You can select to repeat a song, a folder. Similarly, you can you can randomize the order of the songs that are played within a folder or just in, in the entire thumb drive that you have by selecting all. But more importantly, let's look at what the structure or how you navigate through the structure. So now it's gonna default back to, like when you when you navigate the file list uh, or your folder structure, it's gonna to default to whatever song it's playing along with where that file is on your thumb drive. So I'm gonna use the back button here to navigate back up through my structure all the way to, to kind of the root folder and then I'll give you a look. So I'm using the back to go through the, the higher level or higher tier structure of the, the thumb drive. And now let's go back in. Now I have mine structured by artist. And then if you select in an artist, it's by whatever the song is or by an album in this case. And then you can just select your, your song and, it, and it's gonna play, right? It's gonna use all of the metadata that's associated with that particular song on your drive. In this case, I have everything. You have the album title, the the artist, the song, and then the uh, and then obviously the album. Now it's very similar. You can see it's very similar to that of Bluetooth as well as the USB thumb drive. So pretty uh, pretty simple, very easy to navigate through, and and does the job very well. Moving on here, I'm gonna go. To the main menu, you can see auxiliary input. I don't have any auxiliary inputs tied up to this, but that would have been your uh, the two RCA auxiliary inputs when I was going through the wire harness. But let's go into the setup here. So now in the setup or the settings, uh, a couple of options here. I'll start with the audio settings. You basically have a three. Uh, band, equalizer, bass, mid-range, or tre treble. You can go in and select, you know, increase or decrease sort of the gains within each of those. Balance, so left and right, very, very simple, you know, high-level functionality that really exists in all 
all head units at this point. You also have a couple presets here. You have off, flat, jazz, pop, classical. You can't set custom e equalizer uh, settings on this head unit, but uh, you can do it on your device. If you're using like Bluetooth or or even USB and you're using your iPhone, for example, normally there's you can adjust the EQ within your phone if you really wanted to. Now, you got loudness, basically that enhances the output or increases the volume um, and, uh, and, and output volume. And then below this, below the loudness, you see three different zones and you can, you can set each zone to be the output to be on or off. This is gonna turn on, basically turn on or off. <clears throat> the outputs that were on the back of your your back of the device in in the form of those RCAs that I reviewed when I was walking you through the harness as well. So you can turn each of the zones on and off. You can see and um, uh, bear with me. I'm scrolling up and down here because one thing that that's worth noting is uh, there's a very short time period where if you don't touch this device, it's going to default back to the home you know the home screen or whatever you're playing, right? So you might see me going through the menus here and scrolling. So you can turn off and on each of the zone outputs and then finally here on the sub level sub level you can set each of the sub level sub levels for each of the outputs right uh, i showed you on the harness there's a subwoofer output rca output for each zone so you can go in here and independently change the subwoofer gain or, or volume output for each of those zones independently which is kind of cool if you have subwoofers set across uh, in, in different areas of your boat so let's go ahead and go back. You can see that quickly went back to the home screen. The next one I want to go through, I'll just give you a quick quick look at these. There's nothing too important to call out, but you can adjust the brightness of the screen, uh, input volume, the beep, whether you want it on, off, right? And then your, your, your region, right? And whether you're in Europe, uh, Japan, Brazil, you can see the, the different options that this particular unit supports go back to the screen Bluetooth I showed you how to connect Bluetooth but basically you can adjust uh, whether or not you auto connect to your device when you walk it or get within the proximity of Bluetooth uh, you can also rename the device if, if you'd like and then that's that's pretty much it in the, in the setup you got your about which gives you if you were looking for information warrant maybe even warranty or like serial information to give to JBL at one point you've got uh, some of the details of the system um, the version of probably the software etc cetera, etc cetera. let's go back and the last thing I want to show here is volume control. So how do you control volume in each of the independent zones that you've wired and configured this head unit for? It's very easy. You're just going to simply turn the volume knob and it'll display a interface that allows you to, one, uh, by default, increase the volume across all of the zones. You can see as I turn this knob, it's increasing the volume for all the zones or click the enter button and now you can now you can select each of the independent zones select it again and you can now control the, the volume in each of these zones independently and each time that you set them right I'll set these different for each of the zones we want zone three to be lower now let's go back to the main volume now they're gonna it's gonna move them all in sync when you, after you've set each of the independent zones, right? And now you can bring all of them still back down to zero, uh, but it'll keep and maintain that setting until you change it again, right? So very, very easy to control each of the zone uh, volumes, uh, depending on how you've kind of configured your boat, but uh, very nice feature to have and they make it very easy to, to, to do and control. So that's all I had to share with you today. Thanks for watching. I hope I reviewed all the key features that you were interested in seeing in this R4500 and it helps you make a decision on whether this is the right head unit for your boat or your yacht. If you like the contents of this video, please do me a favor, subscribe below to keep me bringing videos and reviews like this to you. Thanks for watching.